Well, guys, it's the day after, and needless to say, they don't messed up the thing. Want to talk about it? Here you go. Well, guys, it's the day after the election. The results are in. I woke up today at about 12 noon. And I must say, guys, I am feeling a little more balanced and put together than I thought I would be. I thought I was going to wake up this morning and not be able to tell my up from down or be able to tell if I was coming or going. I think in this moment, the thing that's keeping me moving is um, my superpower of simply being black and knowing that, you know, I slash we are going to be okay. You know, we are a resilient group of people. We've made it through 400 years of slavery. We've made it through Reconstruction. We've made it through Jim Crow. We've made it through the Civil Rights Movement. And now, you know, as far as I see it, we're living in a modern day second iteration of the Civil Rights Movement. And we will be okay. I think the largest thing that I'm dealing with this morning is realizing how naive um, and in some fronts stupid I was. Um, Y'all know I pride myself on being smart, um, but you don't know what you don't know. And it started hitting me yesterday as I was hosting the election party and I'm giving the people the up-to-date results as they're starting to come in. And I'm looking at this map and it's only blue, two spots up here, one spot over here, two spots over here, two spots up there. And I am seeing this wave of red. And as I'm seeing this wave of red, it's starting to hit me. Wow, this many people either A, identify with the Trump MAGA ideology, or this many people are not adversely affected by the Trump MAGA ideology, um, or this many people are just hateful, racist, and go along with what this man is saying. And I'm not saying that's every Republican, but all of these things are going through my mind and I'm like, wow, I'm naive in the sense because I thought that more people than not thought and felt like me. Um, and that's the curse of living in whatever bubble I've been living in. And, you know, I caught some flack on my Instagram page where I've said, you know, living in Miami and ATL has had me living in a bubble. And a lot of y'all got under my comments and want to get smart talking about how could you live in Miami and live in a bubble? All them Cubans down there. How could you live in Miami and live in a bubble? And Miami was bright red. I can tell y'all are not from Miami. Miami was bright red for the first time in decades, okay? Miami-Dade County, where I am from, has traditionally been blue. Y'all have also heard me say on this platform, I'm a proud member of the Nickelodeon Saved by the Bell generation, okay? I'm not from where y'all are from. When I was growing up, this racism thing, and I know it may sound ignorant and stupid and naive to some of y'all, it was not a thing. It was not something I experienced in my upbringing. And that's why at 41 years old, I am having such a negative emotional response to all of this racism stuff. This stuff that we're going through right now are things that I read about in history class or that I watched in movies. 
I didn't grow up with adverse, intense racial relations in my everyday life with my neighbors, with people in the community. When I went to Tallahassee to go to college, yeah, things were slightly different when it became when it came to race relations, but I was prepared for that. I attributed that to, oh, those funny acting people over there, that's because they're from the backwoods of Florida. I knew to stay away from them. But even with that being said, I had FAMU across the street, TCC. I, I was steeped in, in the Black Student Union and the Black activities. It just wasn't a thing. Then after I moved away, after college, even though Georgia is Georgia, I didn't move to Georgia. I moved to Atlanta. Atlanta and Georgia are two different places. Miami and Florida are two different places. All right. So that's how somebody like me is able to make it to 41 years old and just be naive. I didn't realize that the rest of the world and, and, and despite the fact that I've traveled and been to well over 30 something states. I mean, when you popping in and eating at a Shoney's and popping back out, you don't get the inner workings of what's going on. So needless to say. The spaces that I occupy the spaces that I've always occupied, they have been pretty liberal spaces and not liberal in a political affiliation sense, but liberal in a thinking sense. All right. People didn't give a damn about abortion. People didn't give a damn if you was gay. People didn't give a damn about your religious beliefs. People didn't give a damn what color your skin were. It just wasn't a thing for me. And today, for the first time in 41 years, I realized how big of a thing it still is in this country. Um, the other thing that hit me, um, I just did not realize how much this nation just does not see it for women. And, you know, I don't want nobody being mad at me for not seeing that until now, despite the fact that some of y'all have been trying to tell me, you know, again, you don't know what you don't know, and it's not my lived experience. I can only navigate the world through my eyes, I can't walk in somebody else's shoes. And sometimes your own privilege blinds you from what other people are going through. You know, despite the fact that I'm male, I mean, I'm black and I'm gay, there is still a certain level of privilege that comes along with being male that is uh, innate and bestowed upon me at birth that has really shielded and blinded me from a lot of what women experience in this country. It's been very eye-opening for me to see that America just don't see it for women. They didn't see it for a white one. They didn't see it for a black one. And to think that Kamala did worse in certain areas where Biden dominated. That's the even more baffling part to me. You know what I'm saying? When you had people who were Democrats, like, we're just not voting for a woman. <clears throat> What's even more baffling is the realization that women don't even see it for women. <clears throat> now, this doesn't include black women. Black women showed out during this election. They showed out and they did what it is they were supposed to do. Um, 92% <clears throat> of black women voted for Donald Trump. And when we start having these arguments on social media and we start bringing up the Waka Flocka Flames and all these different people, we're not even going to throw black men into that BS because black men showed up and did what they were supposed to do. 78% of black men voted Democrat. Only 20% of them voted for the other side. And in all honesty, it's 20% too much. But it's not enough, in my opinion, for us to be sitting here carving out think pieces about black men and their desire to be like Trump because that's not the truth. All right? Overwhelmingly, black men voted blue. Black men and women. Riot in Rio! <clears throat> The most baffling thing for me, excuse me, guys, my throat's sore from yesterday. The most baffling thing for me was 
the Latino voter, voter turnout. And this is where I'm going to need a little bit of help. This is where I'm struggling. So 54% of Latino men voted for Donald Trump and 37% of Latino women voted for Donald Trump. Um, I am smart enough to know that um, all Latino people are not the same. They all come from different countries, which translates to all being from different tribes. Um, I understand that um, there are Latino people who are Spaniards, and there are Latino people who are Southern American, there are Latino people who are Caribbean, and that they're all different. Um, I understand that the more Spaniard Latino people uh, or Hispanic people, whatever, um, that they, you know, consider themselves, identify as white, and by certain measures, they just may be. Um, and maybe the confusion for a lot of us is being able to tell the difference between Latino people of Spaniard descent versus others because when you see things like him saying he will start mass deportation on day one and then you see these statistics, it makes you say, how can the Latino community pour this level of support into this man when y'all are his number one target. And so there has to be a piece that I'm missing. I know that if you are, I don't know. I don't know. It, 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 it's just, <clears throat> it's just baffling to me because Y'all going to have to forgive me. My thoughts are all over the place. But it's just baffling to me um, to think that regardless of where you're from, that if you are of Latin descent, you don't feel any level of sympathy or empathy for other members of the Latin community. And then on the flip side of things, maybe it doesn't um, because... There was no huge outrage from the black community overall when they had those Haitian people caged at the border. So I don't know, maybe different tribes, different I don't give a damns. If it ain't my people, I don't give a damn. But it is baffling to me when you start looking at things like mass deportation and him talking about illegal immigrants and the amount of the Cuban population that is illegal and is immigrated over. It's kind of like, you know, y'all issue is the same as the Mexican people's issue at the border in 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 Texas. It, it's it's weird. And the Venezuelan and the and the uh, Guatemalan and the El Salvadorian and, and all the rest of those people, from where I sit, y'all share a common issue. Again, now one thing that I am very aware of being in Miami Dade, Florida, is 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 how many illegal Cuban uh, immigrants there are, and this is not to make it about Cubans versus everybody else. I'm just speaking from my experience. The illegal immigration piece directly impacts y'all. Um, the other thing that's baffling to me, but not so baffling to me, is that I'm well aware of the fact that black people, people of African descent, have a bad reputation globally. Okay? Globally, it is known by every other group of people that you do not want to be black. Whatever you do and wherever you go, you don't want to be black. I've experienced firsthand, I'll never forget the last election, um, there was a guy down at the bar I used to hang out with in Miami, a guy, he was an illegal immigrant, and he was in the thing, in the bar, chanting, Trump, Trump, barely speaking the English. Trump, Trump. I, I followed him on Facebook. Just all this Trump rhetoric. And I'm sitting back, 
and I'm looking at him and I'm like, <clears throat> this is weird to me. Let me try to understand him. And the only thing that I could come up with, considering the fact that you are rooting for the very man who is against everything about you, your language, your culture, your ethnicity, the way you got into this country, this man is anti everything you are, and you are still Trump, Trump, Trump. The only thing that I could arrive at is when coming to this country, people already know, find you some white people and be like them. Whatever black people are, you want to be the polar opposite. Just like that video that I shared with you guys um, some time ago about the Nigerian woman, and she was talking about the disconnect between American blacks and Africans that come over here. And she was saying how she grew up in a household, some, not all, she grew up in a household in Nigeria that told her, when you come to America, stay away from those black people because they're lazy, they're, they do drugs, all these different things. Find you some white people and then they come over here with this level of judgment of black Americans and then they wonder why there's this disconnect between the two groups. I think the same holds true for just about everybody. That um, you are to be anything but black. And let's face it, undoubtedly, the Democratic Party is the damn NAACP. Undoubtedly. Uh, with a sprinkle of a couple white freedom fighters in it. Um, if nothing has proved that more, it's been the demographic breakout um, on the exit polls in which we're seeing. Um, <clears throat> the other thing, and y'all have heard me say this before, I do believe that there are many, 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 white people who do not agree with the bigotry exhibited by Donald Trump. I do believe that. I have to believe that. I have to believe it. I think that basic human psycholo uh, psychology comes into play where certain groups of people are afforded the luxury of voting on economics and economics only because the bigotry and the racism piece simply doesn't affect them. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know that I'm upset with somebody who is just able to cast something to the side because it doesn't affect them. And in fairness, I ask myself, well, you know, Q, when's the last time you gave a damn about breast cancer? When's the last time you gave a damn about the Special Olympics? When's the last time you gave a damn about um, the kids in the cobalt mines in Africa? When's the last time you gave a damn about army veterans? When's the last time you gave a damn about amputees? When's the last time you gave a damn about disabled people? When's the last time you gave a damn about all these different groups in areas that simply do not impact me? And so then you have to ask yourself, can you really be mad with people who are just like, do, 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 do. All I know is his economic policies uh, suit my interest. You know, I don't think you can get mad with people for voting for what's in their best interest. It's self-preservation. You know, it, it's simple psychology. And so, you know, I guess I'm not mad with them. I think the only thing that concerns me and bothers me the most about this whole thing is the racism and the bigotry piece. 
All right. Throughout all of our lifetimes, we have seen and we will see the White House flip back and forth, Democrat, Republic, Democrat, Republic, and we've survived it. We've been just fine. Each uh, administration has had its pros and its cons. That's normal business. That's normal business. I've never had a problem with somebody being Republican. Going back to the 90s when I grew up, it was nothing. It was nothing for you to be at work and, you know, having conversation with people at the water cooler and you're voting Democrat, that person's voting Republican. It was not a thing. Then everybody went to lunch and it just was what it was. You know what I'm saying? We have a difference of opinion on certain issues, but it's not a thing. It didn't it didn't mean all of this stuff that it now means that's up under here. But now, and not, again, some, not all, now when you vote Republican, for some people, it means something. It's got that dirty underbelly up under it, and that's the problem for me. Um, moving into the future, <clears throat> excuse me, guys, my voice is kind of gone from last night. Moving into the future, I think um, the thing that's going to concern me the most is how this man being the figurehead of hatred is going to manifest itself in people's everyday behaviors. All right? Um, listen, if, if we're able to still live as neighbors, go to the gas station and pump gas, go to the grocery store, pick our produce and live in peace and harmony. Then hey, you know what I'm saying? We just got to rock with it. It just is what it is. But if there becomes this stench in the air of superiority and um, preferential treatment and dominance and, you know, this attitude of get out of the way because I'm in the building, that's the part that scares me. That's the part ain't nobody got time for. All right? That's the part ain't nobody got time for to be walking through home goods and, you know, a bitch just cut you off and flicking their hair, just carrying this I'm that girl attitude because this person is the president and it's white power, baby. That's the part that concerns me. Um, the other part that concerns me is what's going to happen to people on the lower socioeconomic rungs of the ladder. <clears throat> as far as healthcare is concerned, as far as social services are concerned, as far as access to medical care is concerned. Those types of things affect me. And I wish I could sit up here and say, oh, because I got two nickels to rub together, I ain't really worrying about it for me. I'm worrying about it for y'all. But no, because I'm black like this and not like this, <clears throat> I'm just curious to know if the bitch is going to come out to my coins. Um. Now, what I do hope is because we do have to make lemons out of lemonade. The funny thing about it is I honestly think this selection, for the most part, um, was won fairly. I don't think that there was any widespread voter fraud. I think that America let her voice be heard. Um, damn it, I lost my train of thought. What was I going to say? I can't remember what it is I was going to say. Um, either way, what I'm not looking forward to, though, 
especially now because this man does not have to worry about another term. So he really doesn't have to worry about being civil or nice. Um, I really think he's going to show his ass with the things that he says. I really think that he is going to go out of his way to cement this white power movement. Um, and I think that it's going to cause a lot of people to act besides themselves. I don't think the entire police force is rogue and renegade. I do believe a few bad apples spoil it for the bunch. Um, with this man talking about police immunity and things like that. Oh, I, re I remember what I was going to say. <clears throat> I hope it doesn't embolden those renegade and rogue police officers to just be off the chain because we already know who the main focus is. So, you know, our illegal immigrant population, you know, you guys are public enemy number one, unfortunately. Um, you know, black people, we don't have to worry about the mass deportation piece. That's just not our struggle. That, somehow or another, this man has been able to convince those people that it is illegal immigrants' fault for everything. <clears throat> those are the people who are truly going to be caught up in his crosshairs uh, in the beginning. Um, I think black people, we, especially our black men and our black boys, we have to be most concerned with their police piece. Um, because we have been, since the inception of police, public enemy number one. Um, you know, uh, I hate to sound defeated, but we're going to have to cross our I's, cross our T's and dot our I's and act a certain way to minimize having to interact with the police. It's just a sad reality. Um, women, this women's rights piece, you know, this women's reproductive rights piece is a huge deal. Um, I don't understand all the ins and outs of the women's rights thing and, and what you guys' medical needs are. And I know what I'm about to say may be an oversimplification. Um, but, you know, y'all going to have to get that contraception while you can. Riot in Rio! Y'all going to have to get that contraception while you can. Um, I know that if I was a young woman within the, the age of childbearing years, and I could withstand going four years without getting pregnant and not have to be worrying about my biological clock, that thing would be going in my arm today. This is just not a regime by which I would want to get pregnant up under. Um, Folks, while we can, riot in Rio! While you can, get your prescriptions, go get checked up, change your diets, get healthy. I don't know what to do, y'all. Um, but what I was about to say earlier when I lost my train of thought was, for those of y'all who kept talking about the economy and money was rolling in, we have to make lemons out of lemonade. And I hope that this bustling economy that y'all speak of for the life of me, I hope at the end of the day, we're able to say, you know what? Yeah, this, 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 this transpired. But baby, the money was flowing. I mean, we got to find some consolation prize in this shit. We got to find some type of consolation prize. For those of y'all who were single issue voters and the economy was your hot bucket item, I hope that when it's all said and done, baby, we all get rich. I highly doubt it, but I'm going to remain hopefully wishful. Um, Hope I don't get let down again. I don't know, y'all. I'm rambling at this point. My thoughts are all over the place. So I'm just going to go ahead and get off the line, but I just wanted to get this off my chest because I know many of you are wanting to know um, what I was thinking and 
Uh, I just wanted to get it all out in, in one video. So when we start doing the show tonight and the weekly show, that it not be something that uh, we have to worry about. With that being said, I'll call y'all later. Bye.